Double, double, toil and trouble, fire burn and cauldron bubble, eye of newt and toe of frog, wool of bat and tongue of dog, for a charm of powerful trouble, like a hell broth, boil and bubble. Isn't that the perfect quote for a Halloween sign? Stick around and watch how I made this using a Dollar Tree plaque, some ghost ornaments, and of course, some lines from Shakespeare. Here's the sign that I picked up from Dollar Tree, um, the Give Thanks Happy Harvest sign. I liked it because of the way the planks were on different levels and different widths. It gave it a lot of character, and I thought it would be perfect for the sign I had in mind. And all I did was flip it over. I'm going to paint the back side, and I'm just cutting off the, the hanger because that is not the hanger I'm going to be using in the end. And I'm using some Apple Barrel Pewter Gray paint, and this will be my base coat, my main color. And I'm just going to apply it directly to the sign, and then using a brush, I'm just going to brush it out smooth. And I used two coats of this paint on the back of the sign. Now, I noticed when I was painting the sign that it has this weird wrinkle in the back that looks almost like paper that got wet and bubbled up a little bit, but there's no paper on the back of the sign, so I'm not sure what that is, but that's okay. It just adds a little bit of character to the sign, and when I'm finished, you're not going to see it at all anyway. At this point, I decided to use some of my Folk Art Home Decor Wax in Antique color, and I'm just going to add that to all of the edges of the sign using just a piece of shop cloth that I keep here in, in my studio. And I'm going to apply it um, very lightly, again, to all the edges. And I'm going to apply it in a light streak across um, where all the planks come together on the board itself. At this point, I took a ruler and using a black permanent marker, it was time to draw in the lines representing all the planks. And looking back at it, I feel almost that I could have drawn in those black lines 
a little bit darker than I did and it still would have turned out great. Um, they came out a little bit light in the finished product and I can go back over them if I choose to, so that's no big deal. Um, but you can draw them in as light or as dark as you would like. Better to err on the light side and be able to go in and fill it in darker in the end because Sharpie is really hard to cover up once you go too far with it. <clears throat> now I'm going to take my Waverly Chalk Paint and Elephant and I'm going to dry brush over the entire piece just giving it a layer of dimension since this is a slightly different color gray than what's already on the board because I do want the layers, I do want it to look old and aged and weathered and have some dimension to it. Then when I am done with that, I will be taking my Waverly chalk paint and ink and I'll be doing the same thing. So we will have all those layers of color going on. Now here's the vinyl. I've already run it through my Silhouette Cameo and I'm going to be cutting each um, line of wording apart because it's each going on a different part of the sign and then I'm going to go through and weed all these pieces. And it takes quite a while so you're definitely not going to watch me do them all. Um, the process is the same. Here I'm peeling off the main part of the vinyl and leaving the lettering behind and then I'm going back in and pulling out all of the small pieces that are still in between all the letters so that it is a nice clean look. Now I'm going to take a piece of transfer tape and I'm going to make sure that the vinyl is really well adhered to the transfer tape itself and I'm going to peel off the backing and then I'm going to place it onto the top part of the board. And I'm going to do this um, for every line of the board until I have all the vinyl stuck down. And if you are thinking about getting a Silhouette Cameo and you would like to know some more information or you would like to see some videos on the process itself, on learning how to use the Cameo, cutting, transferring, all of those things, let me know in the links below and I will be glad to make videos um, about how I do this. I love my cutting machine. I use it all the time and if you guys are interested, I would love to be able to do some videos for you.
Now I did want to use these ghosts as embellishments on my sign. They are um, ornaments I picked up from the Dollar Tree and I didn't like the fact they had the holes in them. So I did add a little bit of wood filler in, let it dry, and sanded that down. Unfortunately, I lost that footage of me using the wood filler, but you get the general idea. Then I painted over them with my Waverly white chalk paint, and I think I used two coats on this um, just to be on the safe side. But while you can see those holes right now, um, because the wood filler is a slightly different color, once they're painted, you will not be able to see it at all. Now I'm going to use my Folk Art Antique Wax and using the same technique I used on the sign, I'm just going to be going back in and adding a little bit of the wax to the edges and adding a few streaks to the center of the ghost itself just to add a little layer of depth and dimension to the ghost as well. So I wasn't sure about that first ghost, it looked pretty dark. Um, I did go ahead and work the second ghost using a lot lighter hand and a lot lighter wax and really liked the way that came out and looked a lot better. So what I did is I took my um, white chalk paint and I just went back over that wax again and then redid that ghost. There wasn't a lot to it, no harm, no foul. And that's the wonderful thing about painting is it's very forgiving. So if you feel like you messed up, don't be too hard on yourself. Just go ahead, go back in and do it, work on it until you're happy with it. Now that I'm happy with my ghosts, I am going to take them and just figure out the placement I would like for them on my sign, and I'm just going to hot glue them right to the sign. And I really love the way they came out. I think they just add something to the sign that takes it from being a little bit plain to being just adorable. And now that I have those placed on there, we're going to move on to making the hanger for the sign. I dug around in my stash till I found this 20 gauge galvanized wire and I decided this would be perfect for the sign. So what I'm going to do is take a dowel and I'm just going to start wrapping this wire around the dowel until I have a length that I feel um, would be good for the hanger of the sign. Now when you wrap the wire and you're coiling the wire, you'll find that the length is really pretty forgiving because you can pull it looser if you need it longer or you don't have to pull it out as much if you like it shorter. When I had it coiled to the number of times I felt would be good, I just took a pair of wire cutters, snipped it off, and pulled it right off the dowel. And that's all there is to that. And then I just took it and started carefully stretching it out and I pushed it in through the back of the sign and just kind of played with it at the front till it was bent around um, to where it would hold onto the front of the sign. And it blends pretty well with the colors in the sign, so you can't really see it too much around the front. Then I just pulled it up till I felt was a good height um, for a hanger. Here is the finished sign. I really love the way it came out. I hope you guys did too. Please let me know in the comments below.